In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the third class feast of Pope St. Pius X, who was a third order Franciscan and is part of our Franciscan family. So he is a spiritual son of St. Francis of Assisi. His baptismal name was Joseph Sato. He was born on the 2nd of June, 1835, and died on the 20th of August, 1914. The body of Pope St. Pius X is actually incorrupt. I'm going to be honest. When it comes to Pius X, I don't have the words to do justice to him and honor to him um, in the way that I would like to. There are things I would um, love to be able to say, but my words would be inadequate. Um, it's as if all that you can do is look in wonder and in awe and contemplate this most amazing saint being awestruck. It's as if you have your mouth wide open and your jaw dropping just saying, what an amazing saint. He was so holy. I mean, I can't find the words to describe it or to do him justice. So in advance, I apologize for my great poverty and inadequacy. I mean, Saint Padre Pio said that after Saint Peter, there hasn't been a more nobler soul to sit on the chair of Saint Peter than Pope Saint Pius X. And that's quite a statement. And this shows the great holiness of this holy Pope. What a gift the world was given in this soul, in this saint. Even the look in his eyes was enough to convert someone. Just to look at him would convert someone. I mean, personally, I think he's one of the holiest men that ever lived. I mean, only God knows the different degrees of holiness in every saint. But I wish um, I had the words to communicate this to you, um, this great holy pope. Um, before becoming a friar, I mean, I was very inspired when I read the life of Pope St. Pius X and even reading um, his catechism, the catechism of Pope St. Pius X helped me a lot on my journey. Um, and I can't hide that he's one of my favorite saints, but this Pius X, he was so Catholic. And this is what we have to tell Catholics today. Don't just be any old Catholic or a Catholic who's a little bit ashamed to say that they're Catholic or a Catholic who doesn't desire to deepen their faith and to know their faith, or a Catholic who's a bit embarrassed to say that they're a Roman Catholic. Pius X was so Catholic, so orthodox, so uncompromising in his faith. I mean, we, this is what all the saints were. All of the saints were orthodox. However, in Pope St. Pius X, it's as if God has given to us a saint that inspires this in us. It, it makes us want to grow. It makes us, um, it's hard to put into words just to see an image or the picture of Pope St. Pius X, at least for me, it, it's uplifting. Um, and this is a saint that makes us want to fight for Catholicism, makes us want to fight and to defend orthodoxy against heterodox Catholics who are not even Catholic because they don't profess the true faith. We need to have this purity of the faith. And we need to stand firm in our faith, firm and solid like a rock, without wavering. The church is our mother and we must stand up and defend the church as the church militant, 
the church of Christ on earth. We must be faithful members of the church, devout members of the flock, faithful to the church's teaching. We shouldn't even really use the term traditional, as traditional just indicates someone who loves the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Traditional just basically means someone who's Catholic. So in truth, we shouldn't really um, use the term traditional, but given that um, we're in this crisis of the faith and um, modernism occupies the church, modernism, which can be called a compendium of all heresies, this has entered the church. Modernism, which tries to change the faith into something different and wants to destroy everything that was handed down to us in our sacred tradition. So it's understandable that those who are orthodox are called traditional, as well as those who defend everything that has been down, handed down to us, and they preserve it, they maintain it. This includes the way we pray, the way we worship, the liturgy, the holy sacrifice of the mass. So it's understandable that um, today the term traditional, or better, traditional Catholics, is connected to the Vetus Ordo, to the Old Rite, or simply put, to the Latin Mass. And we pray to Pope St. Pius X to help us, um, in a certain sense, put an end to this term and division by helping the restoration. After the restoration, there will be no more distinction between who is traditional and who is not traditional, because everyone will be Catholic of the same faith, the same mind. Um, but we, we hope for this um, to come soon, and we ask the intercession of Pius X to help grant us this grace, um, which is connected to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which is, which will be the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, when everyone will be Catholic. So we'll not, we'll, we won't have this um, distinction. Um, and there will, there will no longer be a remnant, a small remnant, um, who defend the faith and who love the faith without um, compromising. So we pray for that day when we see the triumph of the faith and the exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. Pope St. Pius X could see that there was a way of thinking that was entering the church that was not Catholic. Today, we see a way of thinking that is Protestant, a way of thinking that is liberal and progressive. We could even speak about a way of thinking that is Masonic and anti-Catholic a way of thinking that opposes the faith. This way of thinking had crept into the church through the heresy of modernism, which Pius X did his best to hold back and fight against, wanting to prevent it from entering the church and contaminating the minds of the faithful, the minds and the hearts. It will extinguish the light of the faith in the faithful, so what he did was he got all seminary teachers and all clerics before ordination to take an oath against modernism in the hope of suppressing the modernist movement. And it was Pope Pius X who condemned the heresy of modernism. But what we see today is the church occupied by modernism, infiltrated by modernism. It's as if we see the opposite of Pius X, the reversal of everything that he tried to root out, that he tried to stop in this modernist movement. Now, instead of wanting to suppress modernism, there is a desire to suppress tradition. And as St. Paul says in his second letter to Timothy, there shall be a time when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but according to their own desires. They will heap to themselves selves teachers, having itching ears, and will indeed turn away from hearing the truth, but will be turned on to fables. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray and suffer for Holy Mother, the Church. And in a particular way, in this month of September, which is dedicated to the sorrows of Our Lady, to Our Lady of Sorrows, let us unite our hearts to her sorrowful and immaculate heart. It's said that Pope St. Pius X died of a broken heart after the First World War broke out when European nations were at war with one another. This broke his heart. He died of a broken heart. And how heartbreaking it is to see the state of the church today, to see the light of the faith being extinguished in so many souls. But there is hope, dear brothers and sisters. One day everything will be restored. And let us hope the restoration is not too far away, the complete restoration. And let us turn also to Saint Joseph, the patron of the universal church, the protector of the universal church. Let us turn to Saint Joseph and to Pius X, who had the name Joseph. We turn to him, Giuseppe Sarto, Joseph Sarto, Pius X, to help us to become a model uncompromising faith of orthodoxy and let us do what we can to spread the traditional Latin Mass in whatever way we can tell people about the Latin Mass bring someone with you to the Latin Mass this is part of the restoration and let us pray that the light of the faith can be rekindled in the hearts of the faithful and they can be set ablaze with the love of Christ and be missionaries and evangelizers of his love. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.